people. Thanks for coming out. Uh, I'm Christopher Joseph. I'm lead dev on Topcoat. I work for the web platform team at Adobe. The, I'm the JavaScript frameworks lead, which is kind of interesting that I'm working on a CSS framework and that has no JavaScript at all. None. Zero. None. No JavaScript. Um, <laughs> but I think it's for a good reason. So what is Topcoat? Topcoat is a CSS library for clean and fast web apps. That's it. Um, Topcoat.io is the website. Let me go check it out. It has a brief description of all of the things that we offer. It's fast. We have lots of components that we're, and we're adding more every day. Um, we have a default theme, but it's being built to be themable. We use BEM naming uh, conventions for our um, class names. We have open source fonts, open source icons, and, you can, and we have PSDs so you can design with it. So again, most important part is it's just CSS. And why is it just CSS? You can use any JavaScript framework that you like. Um, you can update it, you can change, and you're not tied into um, you know, other libraries make you use their components um, to get any kind of functionality. And we feel like that wasn't the best way to um, make your own apps how you want them to be. So the backstory. People were making PhoneGap apps. Obviously, all you guys are here because you make PhoneGap apps. But they were making these really rich user interfaces, and it was taking them a ton of time to get these really common patterns into their apps. And you look at these, you see a lot of these have you know, the same, the menu slide out, they have header bar, they have these bottom navigation tab bars, overlays, whatnot. It's really, over and over and over again, you see the same patterns. And we thought that it would be useful for us to make it easier to get these into your apps. So we started making, uh, it was called Northstar, actually, and it was a design language for Adobe. And basically what, the, what a design language is, is it's a way that you can um, scale across different sizes, right? You can come up with sizing, colors, components that will actually work as a desktop, uh, mobile, or a website. And that, let us, that, that allowed us to do um, these different designs. So this is the first one, this is the mobile kit, and we did this specifically for our own mobiles, our own um, mobile applications we're developing, and we figured like, well, that's actually kind of useful. We should make this into a library, and we should put it out, and um, instead of just focusing on our own stuff, we should make it themable so that people could make their own design language based off of it. Uh, one of the things that's nice about this is that we actually posted our PSDs. So if you have a designer that wants to comp something up, they could actually take it, the PSD and piece it together really quick. Or you could actually take this PSD, a designer could take this PSD and change it to look however they wanted, wanted to, and then um, that will most likely work with Topcoat as a theme. Another thing that we came up, to, came up with is that um, we ran into was that you had this really great PSD, you have these nice designs, but then what do you do with it? Uh, you have to actually get it in your app somehow. And that, that, tr that process of converting a PSD into CSS was pretty time consuming and I spent a lot of time in Photoshop with the eyedropper and trying to figure out like, what the sizing and whatnot was. We wanted to make that simpler. So uh, what we did was we converted it to all the CSS and then we actually made the CSS have um, comments, and it generates a style guide, a usable style guide from the comments, so that you could actually go in as a developer and, um, oh, and here's actually the link to the top got source so you can go through and see how it works. And basically this is an example of the comments right here. So there's a lot of other libraries that do something very similar, but none of them had exactly what we needed. We wanted something that was a lot more flexible um, and basically this is an object that has, you could put anything you want in here, but we actually look for some specific things, but then you could actually, if you needed to extend TopDoc, you just put another um, YAML object in there. So what this gives you is these, for us right now, it's generating these style guides from the comments that we put in our CSS. It makes it really easy for us to add more components as we go along, but it's also, 
really nice because we can have these working examples, right, on a page. This is our dark mobile theme. Um, and then you can just copy and paste. So if you were going to try out top, top coat, you would go in and include the CSS file and then just copy and paste in this example markup. And it's just example markup. You can use any kind of markup you want. We don't dictate markup. But this will get you going so you can see what it would look like. Um, so this is an important point. <laughs> Users don't care if it's native or web as long as it's fast and responsive, right? They don't care. The average consumer is not going to be like, oh, that's made with web tech. They don't, they don't know that at all. They only know is if your application is janky, right? They go, oh, it doesn't quite feel right. And that's all they really care about is the feel. So that gave us our first tenant, and that's kind of our only guiding tenant is performance first. And when we started out, I actually I hadn't seen any other library, CSS library, that actually posted benchmarks or cared really about performance at all. And there's a lot of people that say, like, well, it doesn't really matter that much. It's only one part of your application. You know, there's still the JavaScript. There's still the markup and blah, blah, blah. But the way I look at it is I'd like to just be able to rule that out. I want to be able to say, like, well, I know that my CSS isn't the problem. I can focus on the other things now, right? Um, so, but don't take my word for it. Don't take anyone's word for it at all. You need to have benchmarks. And so what we did was we built this benchmarking infrastructure based on top of Chrome telemetry. What this allows us to do is stay honest, really. You know, we can say, <laughs> um, we can see if we're getting better or slower. And actually, you can see right here, thank God we had benchmarks. We added a copyright header for legal purposes. And it happened to be included in one of our templates. And the template got obviously used like a template and generated 40,000 lines of unneeded code, and so you see this huge spike. Yeah, good thing to have benchmarks. So this is our benchmark server. It's bench.topcoat.io. You can go along, and it actually says what the things are. Um, if you hover over, it'll give you what these are actually saying. That's, this is the time for layout. This is the load time when you have way too many lines of code. Um, and it, you can see it, we get a little bit better. We get a little worse, we get a little better, and we just are constantly trying to um, improve upon our last bench. And actually, I wanted to point out, Andre, the guy who wrote most of this server-side code, is here today. So if you see him, buy him a beer, pat him on the back, say congratulations. There's a lot of really great work went into this. Um, so some demos. The question I get asked the most is, well, that's cool, I like, and I can copy and paste, but I want to see actually functional demos of this. And because we don't offer JavaScript currently, um, there isn't anything we can point you to to be like, oh, just copy and paste this code, and you'll have the interaction that you need for your application. But people are starting to make them. And, and if you were in the workshop yesterday, you would see Christoph's pull to refresh example. I think this is a really great example. Um, he has a whole blog post here that describes it. But basically, it's an example of top code being used for that, you know, everyone knows what pull to refresh is, and everyone's probably going to want to try and do that at some point. So there's an example there. It actually has source code on GitHub you can use. And the next one is, uh, we're calling this the kitchen sink, and actually we're going to, it was written by uh, Holly Shinsky. And this is just a, here, let me see if I can get out of full screen real quick. No. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is, oh, that's what that was. Okay. This is an example that just uses a bunch of our, um, our components in kind of a kitchen sink example. So you get these really common patterns of the menu, slide out menu, you know, things that you would probably want to use in your application. Our button bars are pasted in here. You know, the tab bar at the bottom, you can see the overlay. What's interesting about this example is that a lot of these components, she's kind of cheating, but it's kind of cool because then you can cheat too. Um, if you go to CodePen, we have our own CodePen site. And we put work in progress up there. And we also put more in-depth examples that we've linked from our, um, 
from our demo page. But basically, you can go in here and you can take CSS and put it in. Like, if you're looking for a component that isn't in our demo sheet, it most likely will be um, in, a, in a work in progress code pen. You can just copy it from there. And if, so there's also like really nice goodies like semantic variations. People will get, I feel like there isn't a single, <laughs> a single post on the internet about semantic markup that doesn't end in a flame war. And so I, re I really wanted to get something up there so people could look at the different ways you could use markup so that it makes sense, right? Yeah. But this is a pretty good example application if you wanted to go through and see like how you could put in some of these components. We're going to actually be actively working on a kitchen sink example exactly like this, but using what's built from our um, build scripts, <laughs> put in a, uh, an app. And then this is the any conference application that we made for um, just kind of a demo app. Like it should be able to work for <laughs> any conference. And we made it for, we have one that's tailored for PhoneGap Day, and this is, we made this for PhoneGap Day Portland. And it's on GitHub. Um, it has a lot of the examples. I'm putting this up here just to tease you guys. You actually can't get the QR code, I don't think. You can, I, w I wanted to see if people would hold their phones up and try and do it so I can move it around for you. Um, but this is a really good example of, uh, of an app the way that you know, maybe I would build it. <laughs> if you wanted to pull it down and see how you could use top code in your application. So why am I up here? Um, one of the ra main reasons I came up here is to get the word out there, right? But I also would like to see contributions. And um, I'm saying that it's open source, not faux open source. Like, it's, it really is. I want it, the reason why we're out you know, putting code out there is so that we can get community feedback. If we're not doing something um, correct or not doing something the way that you'd like it to be, be done, or if you're missing something, if you'd like something really bad, um, please let us know. And I consider contribution you know, filing an issue, um, ranting on Twitter, I get a lot of that, and that's a really good contribution. Um, or actually making a component. And I wanted to call out uh, Fabrice Metra, I'm probably saying his name totally wrong, but he actually did, he is the first community contributor to um, contribute a component, and this is it right here. This is the, the button list. And he, wanted, he needed a vertical uh, button list instead of our horizontal button bar. And he just made it. It was great. He contributed it. Uh, so, again, websites, topcoat.io. And I'm Dam on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>